Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to our channel. For those of you that don't know, my name's Liv and I am the owner and soap maker here at the Toy Barn Homestead. We have goats, we have a belly pig, we have a pair of Great Pyrenees livestock guardian dogs, two pit bulls and a chicken. We have a bunch of baby chicks in the basement though. <laughs> My business essentially is making goat's milk soaps, bath and body products. Today our video is going to be a little bit more into that, um, a little bit of a more in-depth introduction. We've had a few new followers, uh, subscribers here in the last couple of weeks, so I wanted to dive in and do a little bit more of an introduction to get to know us a little more. Mainly me because Tyler's busy. <laughs> but kind of tell you what we do here, how we do it, um, what our plans for the future are. So first off, I make soap. I make soap using our goat milk. This has been a business that I've been running for the last two years. For the last eight months has been where I have really knuckled down. Um, I didn't give it my all previously because I didn't think I had the potential to or the finances to. And now I am going to markets every weekend and selling our soaps, lotions, sugar scrubs and all of our other products at different or well, at the same farmer's market. We are breeding like never before. We have a herd of about 12. Initially my business ran off of one goat and now I have 12 and um, that is how busy I have been that I need a lot of milk. We also breed our goats so we have Nigerian dwarfs and mini Nubians um, and we have one single. My buck is a Nigerian dwarf bullseye and he is our main breeding buck. We are going to be bringing Willie who is who was bred this year into our breeding program. He is going to be our second breeding buck because I do have a couple of bullseye's babies so obviously I can't breed him with those even though that may have accidentally happened last year. Anyway, <laughs> back at around Christmas time, I would say, Tyler and I really dove deep into what we want to do with our lives. We had a new baby. Waylon was born in May and we wanted, Tyler wanted to be home more. He wanted to raise his son. He wanted me to be a stay-at-home mom, which I am. And he wanted to also be a stay-at-home dad. But it's kind of difficult these days to do that. So we needed to get creative and figure out how we were going to get Tyler home. And that is why we have been really hustling with the business, why we have more goats, why we have meat goats, which we will get into a little bit later, and why I'm always so busy, because we're trying to get Tyler home. <laughs> Tyler has his own business, which is relatively new as well. He started working for himself about a month and a half, two months ago now. And he is essentially working part time. He works two and a half days a week and which is a significantly less amount of time than he used to work. He is gone for a while, but it's beneficial to us in the sense that when he's home, he doesn't have to worry about anything. He doesn't have to pick up the phone to anybody. He doesn't have to call anybody. He is home and we have 100% him. This enables him to do more projects that you will have seen on our other videos. I'm really help because I can't do it alone. I can't raise a child, run a business, and tend to all these animals on my own. Believe me when I say I wish I could, but I do need his help. We had come up with this plan for him to start his own business, to work the two and a half days a week, and sometimes it's three days. That's not the end of the world. <laughs> It's pretty nice to be able to sustain your family on working three days a week. So we are super fortunate in the fact that Tyler is very skilled in the uh, trade that he works in. So that enables us to make enough money to try and build our homestead. So with that, I need to go and make some money now. So I'm going to take you guys along with me and show you a little bit more of what I, what else I do to make money. Okay, bye. See you tomorrow. Have a good day. 
how do we financially afford all of these animals? How do we build our homestead the way we are? What are we doing? How are we doing it? So first off, all of our animals are paid by me. Our home is paid by Tyler. Tyler has his own business. I have my own business. And whilst my business is not hugely lucrative yet, that is the bulk of where the animals get their food and how we can afford to buy more of them. Meet people and talk to different people that I've gotten free round bales off of or I've made a deal to get a herd of goats and pay them off. So I'm not necessarily like making a huge chunk of money and then going and like dropping a couple grand on a bunch of goats, but I am able to meet people and people see what we're trying to do. And that's the best thing I think about homesteading is that you get yourself involved in a community that want to help. They want to see you succeed as much as you want to see yourself succeed. With that, if they can help you, they will. And Sometimes it's not financially, but maybe it's getting a free bale of hay or getting a free couple bales of hay and loaning a trailer to you. Make sure I got my mail. There's a lot of different creative ways that we're able to sustain the animals that we have. When it comes to costs and feed and stuff, I pay for all the animals. So that's the inside dogs, the cats, the outside dogs, the goats, and the pig. Um, so I buy all their food and that money comes from my business. Um, the purpose of my business initially was to feed the animals. I guess in that aspect of things, I have succeeded, but I'm only just succeeding. There's sometimes there's weeks where I don't make a bunch of money. I don't have a lot of sales. The weather's been crappy and not a lot of people have come to the market. So I don't sell a lot. And in those situations, I am fortunate enough that I can lean on Tyler. I try to avoid it when possible because all of these animals were initially my idea. The meat goats were Tyler's, but I still feed them. <laughs> but they were all initially my idea and I primarily take care of them all. So therefore they're my responsibility. Housing. And for all of our other bills, Tyler has his business. I guess you could say he works part-time on a full-time wage. <laughs> um, but he has his business. He works like two and a half days a week and he is able to make enough to pay the mortgage, pay the bills, pay the cars and all that. So that is, and we're also super fortunate in the fact that when we bought our house, we bought our house almost like eight, nine years ago now. And the housing market was great. We were, what, 20, 22 and 23. And we didn't want anything special. We didn't want anything spectacular. My house is 800 square, or 850 square feet. So our mortgage isn't huge and we don't need a lot. Um, a big thing that we have tried to focus on this year is trying to make sure that we can provide our own food and that cuts our costs down. Do we, are we able to completely sustain ourselves on our garden and our animals? No, but I think it takes a, it takes a decent chunk out of the grocery bill that with the amount of food that we have been able to grow this year. Financially, essentially, Tyler houses everybody, I feed them. All right, so we're back. Now that we talked about money till we're blue in the face, let's talk about what our plans are for the new year. Um, well, not for the new year, because we're still in the same year. So let's talk about what our plans are for the rest of the year and into the new year. We are done with kidding this year. We may, I say that, hmm. we may have one or two babies coming in the fall, which were whoopsie babies, but that is something that we will be looking into in a couple weeks and see. I'm pretty sure they're probably pregnant. It would surprise me if they weren't. Um, so we'll go. We'll see that later on. For the rest of the year, we are going to be looking into purchasing some more boar goats. So our meat operation is going to be launching, I'm hoping, this time next year. We should have some goats at the butcher by this time next year. This was some. This was another idea of Tyler's. We're really looking at different ways to diversify our income 
different income streams. That's why we do our YouTube videos. Um, and meat goats was something that came up in our discussions and we thought, let's give it a try and see what happens. So we have um, Iceman, who is our full boar buck. And we have our numbers one through three. We have a boar Kiko, which is number one. And two and three are apparently boars, but I don't think they are. So we are going to get those girls bred. I'm hoping in the fall they come into heat and we should get them bred. Then we'll have kids on the ground in five months. And hopefully then we will be looking to butcher eight to 12 months after that, depending on how quick the kids grow. So and how meaty they are. This is our first real like meat adventure. In an ideal world, I would like it to to blossom and to grow so that we will take those kids that we butcher to the farmer's market to sell along with my soaps um, and all of our other goat milk products. So we'll just have an array of goat <laughs> is the plan. Um, fingers crossed that works out well for us. So that is our meat goat operation that we are planning. Um, again, we still are doing a lot of research into it. We don't know a lot about it. Uh, so we are still learning and we are planning on it being relatively lucrative and maybe bringing Tyler home. <laughs> so another addition we have coming to our homestead, not four legged, is we have a barn. I ordered a barn um it is a side lofted barn i believe they're called um so it has the doors on the side not on the front and it's a lofted barn uh 10 by 16 and it will be coming here in september so a couple weeks i'm very very excited this has been a long time coming i have been working in a tarp garage for the last three, four years. Um, I've only been running my business for two, but I've been milking for a lot longer. Um, and I've been, I've been through two tarp garages. The last tarp garage died when we had a pretty heavy snowstorm two Christmases ago. Not last Christmas, Christmas before. So then I put my foot down and I said, I am not getting another tarp garage. I am getting a building and that is final. And I still have a new tarp garage. <laughs> So we are planning on our new shed coming um, in the next few weeks. It is, I'm so excited for it. I'm so excited to have a place to store feed that the goats can't get into, to have a dry place to milk because no matter what, the tarp garage always leaks. Um, I'm going to have more space to store things. Um, we can start to really bulk up on purchasing feed all around. It's just going to be really beneficial um, to our whole operation here. So that is some of the exciting stuff. The barn is going to be the most exciting and probably some interesting videos because Tyler is going to have to hardwire power out there. Um, either hardwire or we're going to do solar. We haven't quite decided on that yet, but there's going to have to be power out there. I need power and um, maybe water. Who knows? We'll see. But um, definitely power, maybe some water. We're going to have places to store all of our outdoor tools. So they're not going to be hanging up as alongside the shed. We're going to have all of the feed bins. going to be shelves where my medications aren't going to get soaked when we have a downpour. Um, it's going to be easier for me to access emergency medications or other medications to make sure that all of our animals are healthy. I have a stockpile of meds, but sometimes I can't find them because what happens is the goats tend to break out of the fence. Um, and when they do, they go straight to the feed shed, which is easily accessible. But when we have a barn, the doors will be closed and they can't get in. And the other like weirdly exciting thing that we've talked about is we're gonna move the cats over there. <laughs> Uh, that is exciting because we have not been able to have the cats over there because the dogs get over there. And when the dogs get over there, then mainly Bella eats all the cat food. So then I moved them out of the shed and put them on the back porch. And then Bella still figured out a way to get onto the back porch to eat all the cat food. So whilst Bella is obese, the cats are like extremely skinny because they never get to eat because she eats all their food. So... <laughs> 
the cats will have an indoor space and it'll be especially nice for them in the winter. Um, we're going to have an indoor space for the goats to birth. We're also going to have an indoor space for Raina. So that is the next topic to talk about. Puppies. Um, puppies. Ah, so exciting. When I was maybe five or six, my parents bred our Labrador. Um, and we had nine puppies and that was back in England. Um, for those of you that don't know, I'm from England. <laughs> you haven't already figured that out. Um, so we have Reina and Mufasa. Both of them are intact and they will be breeding for us. I'm thinking come December time. She came into heat, but he didn't quite know what was going on. So I am thinking in December she should be coming back into heat and I'm pretty sure that was maybe one of her first heat cycles so again I don't think it, anything was going to take he tried but hopefully uh, we will have Reina and Mufasa bred in the winter um, and then that will give us some pups in the new year and that is another stream of income for us so if it is successful we should have a decent amount come from the dogs and then the dogs although they are worth their weight in gold will also be relatively valuable um in bringing us some income with puppies so maybe we can convince tyler to keep one or two more